Now that you've received your new vending machine, we're going to talk about how to set up your vending machine and check it for damage. The shipping company will deliver your vending machine. You will want to check it for damage prior to signing for it. You'll want to check the outside of the machine for any visible damage to the machine. You want to check the front, the sides, and the back of the machine for any possible damage. If there is any damage, you'll want to fully unwrap it and inspect it and call the, the shipping department for ne your next steps. You will want to start by carefully cutting the wrapping loose. Right, take the wrapping off the machine. and setting the cardboard aside. Once you have the wrapping cut away, you can simply cut or lift the top wrapping off. After you have the machine completely unwrapped, again, you will want to inspect the inside of the machine for any possible damage. The front, the sides, and the back of the machine. If the machine is in good shape and good condition, you may sign for the machine and accept the machine. Again, if there is any damage or suspect damage, you'll want to note that on the shipping form with the shipping company prior to them leaving and report any damage back to our shipping department. Once you have the machine received, you'll want to remove the wrapping, the other wrappings on the machine. Inside the machine, we found the fan cover. We are going to install the fan cover in the back of the machine. Simply cut open the fan cover, being careful not to lose the package of screws. Remove the packaging and discard the packaging. Notice that the vent should be facing upwards. Open the package of screws Note the four holes to mount this with. You can begin putting the screws in before you put the fan cover on. I've already started the screws in the four different positions. Get them started and then finish them. Tighten them in so that the fan cover is not loose. 
The purpose of the fan cover is so that the air that gets blown out of the back, out of the condenser fan, blows up and not down. This will cause the airflow in the machine to operate properly and the machine to refrigerate properly. To remove the skids, you may need a few tools. A crowbar, a hammer, and a large screwdriver. Insert the crowbar in between the skid and use the hammer to pound it in. Pry it loose. Repeat this on the front and the back side, both the left and the right. Once you have the skids removed, you will have remaining leg levelers to level the machine with. You will notice that on the front of the machine, there may be instructions on leveling the machine. The first step will be to place the level on top of the machine. You do not want to place the level on the door. You will want to place it on the machine. To level the machine, you will level the four leg levelers underneath the machine. By doing so, to do so, you will either use your tool or your wrench to level until each side is level. After the, the four legs underneath the machine are level, you will bring the two leg levelers that are underneath the door just until they reach the ground. After doing so, make sure that each of the four corners and each of the four sides are level. Remember, Use the machine to level, not the door. Your machine will come with what's called a GFCI power cord. This power cord is going to have a box on it with a reset button, a test button, and a red light. It would plug into a standard 115 volt power outlet. Behind the back panel is where you will plug in the power cord. To remove you will need to loosen the four screws with a, with a one-fourth size or Phillips screwdriver. Slightly loosen all four. And lift up. You will plug in the three-prong power cord, replace the panel, inserting matching the hole as a strain relief and slide back into place. Tighten the four screws the panel will act as a strain relief for your power cord. We recommend a dedicated 15 amp power line for your machine. Depending upon how your machine was ordered, it may come with, with many different peripherals. You will find the keys located in one of two places. Either the coin return in a small bag taped to the inside, or possibly to the front of the machine. Depending upon the build of your machine, you may have a different styling bezel on the front or different peripherals. The display will be on the front of the machine, the keypad, a bill acceptor, a coin mechanism, insert for coins, and a coin return button. The coin return will be located in the bottom of the machine. The delivery door, where you will reach in to grab your product. A display window, where you will see your product from the front of the machine. To open your machine, insert the key into the lock, turn clockwise, half a turn, the handle will pop open. Open your machine. When you open your machine, you can do remove the packaging foam and set it aside. You will also find 
your power cord. Product kickers, which we'll talk about later. A package with your manuals and other safety information, as well as delivery stickers and labels. And a Crowder kit. The serial number of your vendor will be located on the top inside of the machine on a silvery white sticker. It may also be located in the back corner of the machine. The serial number is above the barcode and says serial number. When calling in, it is recommended that you have the serial number so that we can locate your machine. We require the first seven digits of the serial number. Above the serial number on the same sticker, it will list the model number. At the bottom, is your delivery bin where your product will fall and be taken out of. The IVAN sensors are located on the left and the right. These sensors are used for verification of your, of your product. At the top of the door is the door switch which is used to detect when the door is open and closed. There is also a relay located at the top of your door which can be used to turn your LED lighting on and off. The control board and control board cover are located here. The service mode button is located through the hole. There is also a label indicating the different modes in your service mode. Bill acceptor and bill box. Coin mechanism. And coin box. The coin mechanism can be slid out by pulling on the black tab to release. To remove the control board cover, simply remove the single screw holding it in with a Phillips screwdriver. Lift up and remove the cover. You may have a harness connecting it. This is your DEX plug. There are several connections on the control board. Service mode button and there is a red light below it that would indicate power. It is very important that power be removed or machine is powered off whenever working on components of the control board. keypad is to the left of the service mode button. The relay and refrigeration plug is to the left of that. The black plug goes to your IVIN connections. The door switch on the top left hand side. The connections below that power your motors. The black plug below the motor plugs is for your display. On the very bottom right hand side is the power. This is a 24 volt power connection coming from your power supply. On the right hand side is your MDB plug. This stands for multi-drop bus. This powers your different peripherals, such as your coin mechanism, your bill acceptor, and any card reader that you may have installed. Above that is your DEX plug. This is something you may or may not be using. To remove your control board cover, simply remove the screw that holds it in Lift the cover off and disconnect the DEX plug by squeezing the black connection and pulling it loose. 
reverse the process to reinstall the control board cover. On the right hand side of the inside of the machine, you'll find your power supply, power switch, breaker, and at the bottom, your heated glass plug. This plug powers your glass. At the bottom of the machine, you'll find your filter. This is very similar to your furnace filter at home. This filter should be changed every three months. To the left of the filter, you'll find your refrigeration system. It is very important that you keep your refrigeration system and your filter clean for proper refrigeration of your machine. At the very bottom of the machine, there is an air intake. It is very important that you keep that clean so the air flows properly through the machine. Depending upon how your machine was ordered or configured, you may have several different trays in your machine. Generally, the trays at the top are plastic trays. These trays can be pulled out simply by lifting up slightly, pulling forward. The machines will tilt down for loading. Depending upon how your machine was configured, the coils, also known as augers or helixes, may be at different pitches or different counts to fit different products. These can be easily changed out. Depending upon how your machine was ordered or configured, you may have dual augers, single augers, or even in some cases paired augers with a wider range of selection. Generally, plastic trays are at the top of the machine and can be used for snacks, candy, or sandwiches. The lower trays generally are metal trays. These are used for drinks but also can be used for snacks, candy, or sandwiches. To pull a metal tray forward for loading, simply push on the metal tabs on the left and the right and slide the tray forward. Metal trays are bolted in to handle heavier product, such as drinks. Again, metal trays can also be reconfigured for different sizes, different count coils, and different widths of product. Generally, the selection number and price are displayed on each tray. And they may be changed by sliding the pricing to the left or to the right to change it to the proper price. However, the price does need to be changed in the controller as well. You must first power the machine off. To remove the tray, push on the tab and pull the plug loose. Next, you will need to change the direction of the rail. Lift up on the tray, locate the gold pivot points, and push them up, both on the left and the right. This will cause the, cause the tray to slide straight forward so that it may be lifted out. Slide the tray all the way forward, Slightly lift up and pull the tray out. To remove the tray cover, press up on the tabs and pull forward. Set the cover aside. Each motor has two wires attached. Top wire is the common wire. Every single motor in your machine will have this same color. The bottom wire indicates what number that motor is. For instance, a 0, a 1, a 2, or a 3. To disconnect, simply pull loose. The dividers on the trays may be removed and slid over. To remove them, slide them forward and lift up. Set them aside. Again, slide forward and lift up to remove. The motors may be, would be lifted up, pull the auger coupling, the gray part, off the motor. The motors, once again, can be slid to any position for proper spacing. Each auger has a gray auger coupling that connects it to the motor. To remove, simply twist and pull loose. To reinsert, slide in, file the tab, and slide underneath 
the black connection. To reinsert the auger, secure, verify the auger tip is at the proper timing, usually 6 o'clock. Insert the auger coupling into the motor. Insert the motor down, verifying that the auger coupling is behind the ledge. To power on the machine, simply press the power switch, push in where it says 1. You will note the power machine will power on, the lights will come on, and you will hear your bill acceptor cycle, all indicating that the power is on. To load your product, simply lift up on the tray, pull the tray forward, and have it lean down. Place your product in between the coils. You will want your product to fit loosely in between the coils to ensure it will bend properly. To load your drink trays, simply push on the metal tabs, pull your tray forward, and load your product. Push the tray back into place and adjust your prices. When programming to program your machine, press the service mode button. You will hear a slight beep. Now that you've pressed the service mode button, I will show you how to program your machine using the front LED display and your keypad. When you first press your service mode button, it should list the number of motors in your machine. However, since this may be the first time you have turned on your machine or that you have reconfigured your machine, it is best for you to press number two to recount the number of motors. If your display shows anything other than the number of motors, it may be indicating an error message. Please consult your owner's manual as to what this error may be. Once you have counted the number of motors in your machine, you will want to follow your manual to do a tube fill. Press number one. At this point, insert one roll of quarters, one roll of nickels, one roll of dimes through the front of your machine to load your coin mechanism. You will note that the amount deposited will increment on your display. Once you have loaded all the coins into the coin mechanism through the coin tube fill, you may move on to programming the rest of your machine. To exit out of the coin tube fill, press the star key. It should revert back to motors and the number of motors in your machine. Press number five to set your prices. You may set prices individually, by row, or via the whole machine. To price by the whole machine, press number three, Type in the price you want and press the pound key. Press the star key to exit. The price individually, press number one. Type in the selection you want to price and type in the price you want, followed by the pound key to save. From there, you can follow on pressing the pound key to move on to the next selection. Again, type in the price you want, followed by the pound key. Again, you may press the star key to exit or the pound key to move on to the next selection. If you press the star key, you can type in a different item number. Again, it will ask you for the price. Type in the price you want, followed by the pound key. To exit, press your star key. To test VIN a selection, you may press number 8. It will ask you for the item number to test. Type in the selection number and it will vend that motor. There are several options you may change through the options mode, which is number 3. These are outlined in your owner's manual. These options are, include force VIN, bill escrow, multi vin free vin 
fast change, optical VIN, point of sale message, set point of your refrigeration system, keypad backlighting, and a few others. Consult your owner's manual for more information. Depending upon how your machine was ordered and how it was configured, there may be three, four, five, or more trays. The trays can be adjusted for different heights to accommodate different products. The trays can be selected at inch intervals by simply removing the tray and changing the heights of the rails. You will notice on the left hand and right hand side holes for placing the rails. It is important when placing your machine that it is placed within two to three feet of a power source so that your power cord will reach without being strained. It is also important that your machine be set back from the wall. The machine needs at least four inches between the grill and the wall for proper breathing. After the machine has been leveled, the door should glide closed comfortably and open properly. To properly maintenance the machine, the door should be able to open 180 degrees so that you may access the filter and the refrigeration system properly. We hope that this video today was informative. Again, if you have any additional questions about your machine with its operation or questions on programming, you may always reference your service manual or you may contact us via phone, email, or chat. Thank you and have a great day.